So you can see I've got this great little piecewise function here. It goes from 0 to um, 65. And I might want to know the area under that curve. Now, I might want to find the exact area under that curve, or I might want to find the an estimate of the area under that curve. So first, I'm going to do the exact area. Uh, in my little input window here, I'm going to type integral. And you really want to sort of read what all this says. Uh, but I'm going to use this third option here. Integral, function, start value, end value. So the function I'm going to use is this i function. Um, the start value I'm going to use is 0, and I'm going to go all the way to 65. Okay, and that should be finding the exact area under that curve, but it has come up with a question mark, which means that there's a problem with my piecewise function, and I'm going to find out what it is. All right, so I've taken a look at my piecewise function. I think I know what's going on. I was finding the interval between, integral between 0 and 65, but look at this. My function is 0 is less than x, not less than or equal to. So my integral wasn't going all the way to the end. So if I set that up as 0 is less than or equal to, and I apply that, and now I find the integral of i between 0 and 65, I get a nice little answer, 143.52 square units. So that's a good way to find um, the integral or the area under a curve. So what about like an approximate value, not an integral, but just kind of a thereabouts? Well, we can use like a rectangle sum to do that. So I'm going to type in rectangle, and you can see it's auto-completing here. Rectangle sum. <clears throat> now it says function, start value, end value, number of rectangles, and position for rectangle start. So in turn here, the function I want is i. <clears throat> the start value is 0. The end value is 65. Uh, the number of rectangles, oh, let's use like the number 35. And uh, zero should be like a left rectangle, and I think one is an end rectangle. So I'm just going to type the number zero in there. Oh, yeah, there you go. All right, so now we have an approximate value. And you can see it's 148.25, which is an overestimate compared to our exact value, which kind of makes sense because you can see we're getting these big chunks of rectangle above that slope, and then not a lot of like sort of balancing stuff. Now, I can do something a little bit funky here. I'm going to add in a slider and just call it like, um, just call it A. Uh, and I'm going to change that number from, uh, say, 2 to um, 300. Now, inside that rectangle sum, I just double click that rectangle sum function, start value, end value, this is number of rectangles. I'm just gonna just gonna hit that there. I really like doing this. Okay, now this is a very terrible estimate of the area under this curve. I'm using two rectangles. One rectangle that starts from the start and one rectangle that starts halfway along. If I increase to uh, it's using like 18.5, which is a bit silly. If I use like 20 rectangles, you can see my answer is getting closer. If I use, uh, let's say 65, fine, whatever, 66. If I use 66 rectangles, you can see I'm getting very, very close to the answer. And the more rectangles I add, the closer to the exact value my answer is going to be. Um, now, I'm going to just add in one more slider here just for fun. And I'll just call that B, and I'm just going to set that up to be uh, 0 and 1. Now, I'm just going to change these rectangles to something a bit more manageable. Now, just watch what happens here. I'm going to go back into that rectangle sum, and I'm going to assign the, the rectangle start end to be that new variable B that I put in there. Now, what that allows me to do is switch from start rectangle, end rectangle, start rectangle, end rectangle. And actually, it also allows me to sort of do like a, a halfway. 
So it's like the mid rectangle, like that. And there is another more accurate way to come up with an estimate. That's a funny way of thinking about things. And that's a trapezium sum here. So a trapezium sum will do everything that we've just done. Um, let's do the function i. Um, let's start at 0, end at 65. Let's use our variables here, a and b. Oh, actually, I don't need b. Trapezium sums don't have like a start or an end. Okay, there you go. We'll just hide that. You can see trapezium sums like that looks really, really close straight away. 143.52, 143.65. That's a really, really close estimate. Even if I use much less um, trapeziums, if I go down to like six or three or four or five, it's still a really good estimate. Um, so trapezium sum is probably a better estimate than a rectangle sum, but you should know that already. Okay, that uh, those are a couple of things that you can do with uh, GeoGebra when it comes to finding the area under a curve.